There was a lot of cool concepts on the Tokyo Auto Show this year and I'm gonna talk about all of them that I thought was really interesting but in this video we're gonna talk about the Subaru, the Subaru Sports Mobility Concept and this is a very strange design by Subaru so what I'm gonna do in this video is of course we need to talk about what's going on here because it's not necessarily a bad design, it's, it's, a, it's a very strange design by Subaru. I'm gonna let you know what I mean when we jump into Photoshop and have a look at the front side rear and also the interior. Now they say that this doesn't look like a production car but when you look at the interior it looks closer to production than you might think. Now before we jump into Photoshop let's have a look at what this car is all about from this article in car, from Car and Driver linked down below in the description. So Subaru Sports Mobility Concept is an electric Japanese muscle car and I think I agree with the, the words of Japanese muscle car when you look at this thing. It looks pretty compact and very uh, chiseled and squared off. While the sports mobility concept is a dazzling piece of design, it likely has no bearings uh, bearing on a future production model. Um, you never know. But the, the thing with Subaru is they've, uh, through the years, they've done a bunch of cool concepts. Uh, the Visive concept, the WRX concept from I believe 2016. They nail some of their concepts and then when the production version comes out, the Visive for example was a preview of the current WRX. It looked fantastic and then the WRX came out and everybody like, at least me, like scratching my head like what happened with the Visive proportions and the graphics. So I'm not sure if this is uh, gonna be the same story here. So Subaru didn't provide more details or show an interior but I, but they did though because in the press photos even in this article you're gonna see the interior. So Subaru themselves says that this evokes the evolution of the Subaru Sport values. Not entirely sure what that means. The driver is capable of controlling R for all four wheels at will meaning that you probably have four wheel steering. Cool and with this wheelbase that is definitely cool. It, uh, it feels like a small rally car and the turning radius for this thing if you have four-wheel steering with this type of wheelbase it's gonna be very very tight and it's gonna probably rip your face off if you take a corner too quickly. Muscle car, muscular looks with the squared off front and boxy fenders. Uh, you also have blue accents peek out from behind the gray bodywork. You can see this is forged carbon fiber. It looks like forged carbon fiber in the wheels as well. I'm not so sure about this bulky piece here but we're gonna talk more about that in a minute. The front bumper, rear bumper, side sails and aero wheels covered are finished in forged carbon fiber as I just said. Subaru showed one interior photo and this is the interior right here. Um, you judge for yourself. Do you think this looks production ready or not? I think it looks like it could go into production today essentially. You have an electric STI model coming by the end of the decade. Perhaps some of the concept styling elements could carry, carry over into future fast Subarus. You never know. So with that said, let's jump into Photoshop here. Let's have a look at this design from front side, rear and let's talk about this interior. All right, so here we have the layout from the front. Let's start up here and have a look at this design. The thing about this design that is strange to me coming from Subaru is first of all, it's a very boxy design. Just have a look at this front end. I do like how they almost made a modern interpretation of rally lights in here and as you know Subaru having a, a long history of rally um, success so it makes sense to make sort of a rally slash muscle car slash I don't know what and then you have these headlights being very thin and these also uh, you know can, can display different type of styling here not just have the three settings like we have here, three LEDs. You can customize this entire LED to show you essentially whatever you want. Then you have a big squared off intake in the front end looking very uh, functional for sure because it's gonna scoop in air right here and then you see up top we do have a vent coming out right here. So basically what this entire hood acts as is a big wing which funnels air underneath it. So coming in here and shooting up up top of course pushing down the front end at high speeds. You can see the front the carbon fiber the forged carbon fiber going all around here. This is something that for a Subaru not so sure that would make it into a production vehicle. But again I'm not so sure like if this is an automotive design it has some automotive cues in it. For example 
I'm talking about this surfacing here. This is a beautiful surface, this styling that we have here and also sort of this design at the bottom with the soft surfacing and then coming into a very sharp chamfer is going all around here and I think it's a cool idea by Subaru uh, it's not it's definitely not a necessarily beautiful design but it did it does have some personality to it and some definition and that's exactly what I've been longing to see from to, from manufacturers specifically when they create their EVs and I think uh, this is a cool cool experiment by Subaru to add these uh, features in this type of design language, completely new design language from Subaru into this uh, design and it's probably going to be uh, sort of a preview of what's to come from Subi themselves. Now looking at the side view here and have a look at this wheelbase, super short wheelbase and as I said if you have four wheel steering on this thing it's gonna turn like a rabbit when you uh, turn the corners and turn all four wheels. This line right here reminds me a little bit of the um, uh, WRX, the STI that has sort of a, a, a line going down here as well but it doesn't really have the same line coming back in the rear end. In this case what I think this does having these two very similar treatments in this area and in this area it creates uh, it, it just removes the dynamic feeling that I want to see in a car design because now if we just put a center line right here and we look at this section this could might as well be the front end of this car there's no movement in this car and no no dynamic feeling even if we have muscle cars for example just have a look at the Challenger design put a center line you have the big uh, muscle over the rear axle and you have the hood sticking out uh, further in, in parallel lines creating this movement in it even though it is a very boxy and muscle car design. This though feels like it completely lacks any sort of automotive dy dynamic feeling in it. Then we have this bubble roof up top being completely blacked out so you can't really see the interior uh, from the outside. You also have this pillar here coming up and these wheels I'm not a huge fan of having this type of platform just covering up the wheels. To me when I look at these wheels it feels like there is a gorgeous wheel here behind this but for some reason it's covered up by this um, platform as I said in, in, right in the middle this forged carbon fiber platform and then this piece at the very bottom looks very heavy to me this looks like a block of just pure mass cutting into the car I, again removing this dynamic feeling and integration between the elements of the car that I want to see in a car design it doesn't matter you, you can still make a dynamic looking muscle car and I just gave you the uh, the Challenger as an example and also the Camaro looks pretty dynamic. Now looking at the rear end and I think this is uh, my favorite view because I do like these wings that we have cutting in right here into a pretty solid looking bumper. So they implemented a proper bumper here even though this piece, this uh, wing in the diffuser is going to be the first thing that hits something if you reverse, if you back into something it's not actually going to be the bumper that is pretty substantial and then you have the similar type of uh, tail lights that we have in the front end. Very simplistic. And you look at this whole surface right here, this surface. You have Subaru uh, illuminated right here in the middle. And then there is really nothing going on except for this subtle little line in, in the center. And you don't of course have any exhaust. It would be cool to have this be an internal combustion engine and have quad pipes like that just sticking out like we have on the uh, STIs. I do like this chamfer that we have here and this panel that kind of covers up the, the, the rear axle. And also we have the same styling in the front end as you can see. And then we have this blue accent behind it. So it feels like a, a different layer that covers up the rear uh, the rear axle. Maybe it has some aerodynamic features. I am not entirely sure. I'm pretty sure it does uh, because uh, the engineers would want to have that and not just let the designers go all crazy without some efficiency in the design. And here we have the interior. So this is where I think I'm not sure if this is taken you know parts from other Subaru models just to have some sort of interior in this car because this is d definitely I mean look at all these features and all the integrations and the materials there's nothing in here that is uh, concept uh, too conceptual to put into, pro into production this definitely feels like an already made 
design that, that's in production today. And that's the reason why I think that maybe, just maybe, they will put, put something like this into production from Subaru. And that would be pretty cool to see because what that means is that Subaru has a completely new uh, brand identity if they decide to go into this route when it comes to uh, uh, their future production models. More of a muscle car design, more of a boxy and chisel chamfer design. But again, if you look at the front end of this, it doesn't really have any sort of unique features that uh, the brand could build on. When you create a brand new design for a car company, look at, I think the best example is probably Genesis. They haven't been around for very long, but just a couple of years ago, they decided to go with this two line design in the front end. Two lines for the daytime lights and the headlights, cutting into the side and coming back in the rear. And that is a, ex an extremely strong brand identity that you can work on for a couple of decades moving forward and still have a very strong identity. Looking at this, there's no unique features in the front end that I can see making up a new Subaru face. And maybe that's something that I might have to work on moving forward.